Hey guys, welcome back to my channel and welcome to a chatty video today. We have a special guest and this time it's not my pimple, but we have little Andrea here. Hi. Hi everyone. Hi everyone. I am two and a half months and I don't want to nap today. At all. At all. At all. So she's going to be here with me and we're going to chat. Today's video is about brands that I'm not buying and why. I saw my friend Mariam doing it here on YouTube and I will link her video down in the description box and I was discussing with her in the comments and she said you should do it. So I decided to sit down and do it and um, yeah don't take it personally these are just my opinions and my reactions to the marketing that comes out or like my, my impressions of the brand are these glasses and like distracting with the reflection probably and uh, let's start with uh, a brand that i recently duped yeah you also don't like it huh it's a uh, kaleidos makeup and uh it's not like i don't like the brand it's just the color stories never really uh hit the mark for me it was never really a brand that i was particularly like swooned by the palettes that they made are actually I think quite nice, it's just never something that stole my heart. Um, at the beginning they came out with these um, small five pen palettes with the beautiful packaging, which however is a little bit uh, not handy, like less optimal for use. And uh, the one that I was interested in of course was the green one. But then I saw, I think um, Melissa here on YouTube do a comparison with the Gemini palette by Melt Cosmetics and the Kaleidos palette was a little bit more grey toned with the mattes and I love my Gemini palette and I didn't need another similar palette that was even a little bit more grey. So I decided not to purchase that and recently they came out with the a flower punk collection and I just did a duping the vibes video to see because I thought it was kind of a cool color story but the pinks aren't really my thing so I pulled out things that I had in my collection I'll link the video in the cards and in the description box if you're interested to see it and uh, yeah I came to the conclusion that indeed I don't need to buy it I have the colors and uh, I did one look which I really liked but then I didn't really um, reach for it again so I'm okay with not buying it do you agree Andrea she agrees let me check do you agree I agree I think that was a fart sorry guys next up is Charlotte Tilbury and Charlotte Tilbury is a brand that just makes me feel inadequate it's a little bit too bougie <laughs> it's a little bit too fancy for me um, high class cool, expensive, I don't know, just not my, it, it, I just don't feel like I, I can, <laughs> to be honest. I purchased a set of mini lipsticks uh, this winter, I think, and um, the formula is okay, but I don't think I would spend 30 euros on a single lipstick from her also because when I saw them in store a few times, I swatched all the colors and none of them really was like my perfect die for color so um, I don't I never felt the need to buy it there's a few things from the brand that I'm really interested in such as the face powder which is absolutely uh, I don't know loved by a lot of people they say it makes you look flawless but it's not a heavy powder it looks really beautiful um, some people also say that it's quite similar to the Nabla Cosmetics Press Powder, which I have. So I didn't buy the Charlotte Tilbury one so far. Uh, the bronzer has been on my wish list because everybody's like, oh my God, the best bronzer in the world. But it's a matte powder bronzer, so maybe not necessary to buy uh, right now uh, because I'm into creams and shimmery things. Look at these cheeks. This is our glass effortless also expensive <laughs> also expensive um and uh their uh, blushes look also really nice some of their pillow talk the medium and intense ones are really really interesting i think but they're matte powder brushes and these days again i'm into shimmery uh, blushes or cream blushes so not really for me right now and it, as i said did i say it's expensive it's expensive it's not something you just go and try i want to get things that really 
will get use out of, that I will get use out of and things like that. Um, from them, what else is there that was interesting? Complexion products, I never really found the right one, um, in even description-wise for me, so I didn't ever buy from them. There, only that little mini set. Moving on to P. Louise. P. Louise, um, they, they have these um, eyeshadow bases per skin tone, also colorful ones, and some eyeshadow palettes. And one thing is, she, Louise, I guess, is um, quite controversial with what she says and how she behaves. And on the other hand, they also just promote or, or ravel into a style of makeup that I don't like, which is these very extreme cut creases. And it's, it's not that I don't like it per se. I mean, it's nice for an Instagram photo, but it's not something I would wear. It's not wearable for me. It's too much makeup for me, she says, looking like this. But this to me is very wearable. And um, the colorful rainbow cut creases a la James Charles are just not my thing, so I'm not buying from the brand. I'm not even tempted, to be honest. Another brand that is uh, makes me feel inadequate is Glossier. And um, they are just for cool girls who are, I don't know, walking around metropolitan New York or London or Milan and being, you know, cool and young. And I'm not cool or young anymore. <laughs> <laughs> no, I don't know about the young part, but I just don't feel cool and trendy enough for it. Did I say cool enough times? Maybe not. Um, there's a few products from them that I uh, had eyed a few times, uh, like the cloud paints, the, the, those are the cream blushes, but I bought the flower bomb, cheek, the flower beauty cheek bomb, blush bomb which is supposed to be a dupe and I like that one and Glossier uh, doesn't ship to Europe uh, so it's difficult you either ship it to the UK or the US so it's difficult for me to get my hands on um, the brow marker was also interesting because Katie Jane Hughes uses it and loves it but I think like color wise it doesn't suit me and yeah just not not for me not for me then a um, Another brand is Bite Beauty, and uh, that is actually a recent one that I decided not to purchase from because I was looking at a few declutters or comments uh, videos from YouTubers in Canada that use a lot of Bite Beauty, and um, they were... She's eating my hand. There was makeup on that hand. Baby girl, are you hungry? Um, back to Bite Beauty, saying that their products were uh, going off on them and not being, um, yeah, just not lasting a long time. And Bite being a more, whatever, green and natural makeup brand, I understand uh, that they use less conservatives and stuff like that, but to, that is not my philosophy. I want stuff that performs well and lasts, like MAC lipsticks, for example. It doesn't need to be natural for me especially in makeup, uh, I just want it to work. So, no bite beauty for me. Then uh, a brand that I feel just never recovered from the 2017s um, and those years there is Tarte Cosmetics. They had their maracuja blushes, uh, they had their sh shape tape and they never really got past that. So everything they've brought out recently was just never interesting to me. Um, maybe, maybe this year they're redeeming themselves. They brought out some bronzers in this uh, oval baby blue packaging, the cream bronzer that seems super interesting. People are liking the formula a lot and uh, a new hydrating foundation, which however seems to be a real like full coverage foundation, not a, not a tinted moisturizer. So maybe they're redeeming themselves, but I haven't bought Tarte in a very long time. And even that I've only had to, uh, like I still only have one blush and then one mini blush from them. That's it. Shape tape was never my jam. Too, too dry and pigmented and full coverage for me. Another brand that I feel has been stuck in what they do and not really innovating is Benefit. They have their box blushes and bronzer. They have their brow products and their mascaras that people love, but there's nothing really new 
now I think they've been releasing uh, a shimmery version of their bronzer or Fula bronzer, uh, whatever. I mean, not really that interesting to me. So Benefit is a no for me. I haven't bought anything from them in a long time. And uh, I also don't feel like they've brought out stuff that was interesting in a long time. Another brand is Juvia's Place. I bought the Tribe palette a few years ago and um, unfortunately that was a bad experience for me. I didn't like the formula and I just from never recovered from there. Um, the, the, the matte eyeshadows were not my favorite and unfortunately then I cannot trust to purchase it anymore I guess plus what they make usually it's only the eyeshadows that were interesting to me and they haven't made something as good as the tribe palette in a long time so um, sad to say but um, no Juvia's place is not for me even she is like no mama no no not interested not interested I don't know if I can keep her here, but I guess she's distracting. She distracts me, but now then she will distract you as well. Oh, not comfortable. And uh, yeah, so Juvia's Place is a no. It's been a long time since the Tribe palette. I, I just never bought from them again. And they have, I don't know, quite a few nice things. Maybe, I don't know, actually. I just don't know. Glosses, something. I, I don't follow. I don't, I, I just couldn't trust them after not liking their eyeshadow formula so then I don't buy from them final uh, brand is uh, one that I actually take more of a political stance towards is Makeup Revolution um, Makeup Revolution has for a long time just ripped off other brands ideas and creativity and that bothers me a lot so I decided not to buy from them um, the, the original things that they do seem to be accepted well in the community, but I had tried uh, their formulas at the beginning. Let's say I had an uh, eyeshadow palette from them that I had received in PR to review for my blog. And then I had bought lipsticks and some both liquid and normal lipsticks and some blushes. Just the quality was not there. Just no, no way. No way. So I'm... I per se don't buy from Makeup Revolution. I don't think it's worth your money. I'm also at a point in which I rather buy fewer high-end things um, or how, as it turns out, more high-end things. <laughs> Just uh, uh, not buying drugstore makeup anymore. And I have my uh, staples, eh? you know, my love for Maybelline mascaras and concealer. Um, I buy from Colourpop, but I find that those are products that are high quality at a lower price, whereas I don't know that Makeup Revolution does the high quality part. Then again, I haven't tried their, their formula in a very long time, but I didn't like it, so I'm not gonna go and spend my money on them for now anymore. So, that was this Negative Nancy video. I hope you enjoyed it and uh, I would like to know uh, from you in the comments down below if there's any brands you don't buy and why. And again, don't take it personally. These are just my opinions on the products and on the marketing rather than anything else. Andrea is getting really restless. Look at that little red head because she's just all like all and um, we're gonna go uh, get food and some cuddles and um, get horizontal again, hopefully. And she can take another nap because mama thrives during baby's naps. And, uh, yeah, and she also, look at that, look at that huge mouth. <laughs> okay, guys, thank you so much for watching. Bye-bye, see you in the next one.